All righty, everybody. Oh, happy day. I hope you're doing insanely well. I'm sitting here with Kenny from Medicare Millennials. We're going to have fun today. We're going to talk about the riches that exist in the niches of this space. If you're looking at working in the senior market, okay, selling insurance, whether it's Medicare, life or annuities, my goodness, we're going to be talking about what you can attain from attacking and helping this great demographic. We're going to help you be decisive to understand maybe if you should be a face-to-face -face agent or or maybe a telespace agent. We're going to get into this with you. But before we do this, jasonfinalexpense.com. I'm very blessed to run a national insurance agency. If you need any help at all, we do recruit agents across the nation. So reach out. We'll help you in any way we can. So Kenny from Medicare Millennials, thank you, brother, for being here. Mm -hmm. Say hey. <laughs> hey, what's up, guys? Jason, so excited to be here, man. I love chatting with you. We've always chatted offline, on and off quite a bit for the past couple of years. So thanks for inviting me onto your channel. Good. Thanks, buddy. You guys are doing great work over there. Love what you guys are doing. And thanks for coming on, buddy. And it, you guys, the biggest thing for the audience, uh, you know, to understand Kenny does face to face. It's amazing, but he does things differently. All right. At the Medicare millennials and different is not bad. Different can be really freeing. So let's talk about maybe what you do different selling Medicare and you guys do it yeah. insanely well. Um, on the face-to-face -face arena. What does that look like for you? How did you niche down for the audience? Yeah, man, I'll try to shorten uh, what could otherwise be a long story, right? How we, we ended right. up where we are. But uh, what's funny is, you know, you kind of say what, what me and Ethan, uh, and we're not like the only people that do this. We didn't necessarily invent this idea, but it's what we specialize in, right? Mm -hmm. It is unique, but in a way, it's, a, it's kind of a retro thing. Like we kind of just took, what has worked in years past and have applied it to the Medicare market. And um, like you said, riches are in the niches. So while everybody else was zigging, we were kind of zagging and ended up here. So in a nutshell, we just take a really simple local approach to building a Medicare book of business. So um, we do mostly face-to-face, -face. you know, when things hit with COVID and the ups and downs, you can do what we do this local Medicare presence over the phone. And some of our agents do that, but most of us that most people that work with us do lean more face-to-face -face, and that's what I do. Um, and we actually, we really use two marketing tools. One of them is good old fashioned direct mail leads. Okay. That's the basis of the foundation of how we encourage agents to get started in this business. Okay. Cause it's a, it's a high intent lead. Um, not necessarily the highest intent lead. There's a lot of new marketing strategies out there, but it's a consistent high intent lead uh, that when I say consistent, you can get kind of a regular amount of leads every week once you learn how to do direct mail marketing and partner with some third party that helps you do that. And then the second aspect to what we do is we really are focused on local. So that could mean within a 200 mile radius, or if you live in a more populated area, that can mean within a 50 mile radius. It could even mean just in your city or large town if you've got enough prospects there. So you start out with that direct mail campaign. You go visit these folks face to face and make really good relationships relationships. And then what you're trying to do is as you grow, hit your first 100, 200 clients, then we want to add in like grassroots marketing and generating referrals because you're a local Medicare agent. And one thing I'll point out about this is there, there's a call center on every corner. When I say call center, I'm not talking to a telesales agent. I'm talking about big call center, Medicare call Absolutely. center. But what there's not is a local Medicare agency on every corner. That's not a thing. There's a PNC home and auto guy on every corner in your local city. There's not a local Medicare agent on every corner. And so once you've built your core base using direct mail, you can begin to do these things locally to drive inbound calls to yourself because you're a locally known expert. And it's a really beautiful thing because you can begin to lower the amount of direct mail leads that you buy, and you can begin to double down on like these referrals and these local activities that you do for free leads. It's, it's a really cool dynamic. So that's a high level view of what me and Ethan's kind of just general niche strategy is. And I will just throw this out there. You know, we started as final expense agents. We've done, and we've dabbled in, this is my seventh year in the business. 
but I didn't really niche down on Medicare, specifically Medicare Advantage until two and a half years ago. So I spent my first four and a half years, I don't want to say dabbling because I had success or I wouldn't have made it that far, right? I would have already filled out a sure. business, but it, but I never found the niche for me or the right partnership to kind of really help me start succeeding long term. But I've, I've done final expense. I still sell final expense to my Medicare customers, um, even occasional annuity, but I prefer to leave that to those guys. And I just love the senior market. I just so happened to niche down on Medicare and it, and it works for me. And Jason, you know, you're well known in the industry for being specifically an expert in telesales, you know. And so I'd love to hear how what you're, you guys are doing and what you specialize in, how that kind of looks compared to what me and Ethan focus on. So Sure. So I appreciate that. Done telesales a long time, as you know, and our agency is 95% telesales, 5% face-to-face, which is like the opposite of most, right? And you guys are getting that ground game on, and I love that. In telesales, we've got such a bigger map. Right. We can kind of like hella drop into Georgia, fly out and then immediately drop into California. The next phone call. Right. So we've got this ability to like auto transport, kind of like Star Trek, the old beamer, beam me up, Scotty. Same idea Mm -hmm. in telesales. So it's pretty powerful that way to sell a lot of products. We do a lot of Medicare insurance, life insurance by phone. Right. No big deal. But, you know, it's it's just a different it's a different way of doing things. And the local advantage for sure you know, I'm even a big proponent, even in telesales, to work your own state, okay, unless you live in New York or in Florida. In that case, don't do outbound there. Watch my content. That'll help you. But when it comes to telesales, it's phenomenal because we can get a lot more leads for a lot lower cost. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, the fact that you and your team are using direct mail leads, I've done telesales using direct mail leads. They're powerful. The buyer intends mm-hmm. money. And a lot of good Medicare insurance agents can do great work by phone when you know what you're doing. Like mm-hmm. for sure. So it's, it's just a different way, not a right way or a wrong way. You're like our agency does a lot of telesales. That's what we love and it's fun, but it's not like in this okay, position that, oh, Jason's right and Kenny's wrong. That's not the case. Kenny's doing crazy good work on, on the niche. And I love the fact that you're like, it's a local advantage. It's the truth. It is a truth. Like what you're doing, having that grassroots effort, We can create all of that by phone to a certain degree, but when they have that local street corner where they're like, hey, I see Kenny at, you know, the the, the grocery store and I see him here and I see him and his kiddos right at the the local events there, that's going to get you some organic, you know, traffic. Well, you have to get your hands dirty, okay, to grow an organic garden, you know it. But Mm -hmm. what you're doing, Kenny, is legit work. That face-to-face play, you know, as you know, I used to do face-to-face back in the day. Um, I'd prefer to do the tell us base. Let's put it that way. See, I <laughs> but think it's hard a work. Great, a great point right there that a lot of agents, especially if you're brand new, if you're watching this video and you're kicking the tires, trying to figure out where in this big senior market pie, where you can niche down and fit in. Here's a couple of things I would bring up. And then Jason, I'm sure you can expand on it, but number one, it, you're, it depends. When you go do a ride along with somebody in the field, it's not going to take long before you go, man, I don't like this. That house was stinky. That was awkward. I didn't feel comfortable versus another person that ride along rides along with me goes, man, that was great. I love gotten to go face to face that it was so goofy what that guy had on his wall in there. And then he cracked, you know, you're going to know pretty quick if you truly enjoy and you know i don't mean 100 percent. you love selling insurance face face but you're gonna know like i can do this right like i enjoy that same goes for telesales i did a year in final expense telesales and i did pretty good but there was two reasons why it wasn't for me number one i really hated being on the phones it, that my personality I, I had so much i would get anxiety by halfway through the day from sitting still. I'm a very anxious person. And I would be, I began to dread being on the phone. Then I know people like yourself, but a bunch of people are like, dude, I love being in my pajamas. I love being able to like take a break and be in the comfort of my own home. I love how I can talk to thousands of prospects across the country all in one day. Right. But they enjoy 
being on the phone and that excites them. So if you're a new agent, you really got to ask yourself that question. Both of them work in different ways. What do you, what excites you more, right? Like, what do you prefer? Some people hate window time. I don't want to rack up miles on my car. Some people got to get out of the house constantly because they're like a busy bee and they'll, you'll never get them to, to buckle down and work on the phone. So I say all that to say, how did you end up loving to specialize in telesales? Because it's kind of like the, uh, in some ways it's a personality trait, I think. So part of it, I mean, it, it's part of it for sure, but I ran professional call centers for three plus years. Okay. I ran it for three years before I even entered into the insurance industry. So I had a, a telesales background before I even became an insurance agent. And that helped in a huge way. Um, I enjoy the, the old face-to-face days for sure, but I enjoy it as in like a past tense. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's just uh, the windshield time. I can have way more conversations now and way more Mm -hmm. conversions because I'm not, I'm not driving. I'm not getting no show that happens in the industry, Mm -hmm. but at the same point, I'm not benefiting from what you would be able to benefit. And you found your niche where you can be that local guy and you know, the local Medicare plans for your tight geographical area, right? Mm-hmm. Where a, 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 an agent that maybe is across the entire nation, like what we do, it takes maybe a little bit more work to niche down because we can't get that niche and the rich of it when it's like, oh, the plan in Maryland is going to be completely different than maybe the plan in Tennessee or the plan in right. Georgia, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like, you've got a major advantage there in how you guys are running that ground game. Because once you get that ground game down, it's I'm guessing, I'm just guessing here, but I'm guessing it's almost second nature for you and for Ethan, where to, as a telesales agent, if you're jumping around in states, right? And that's why I always propose work your own backyard prior. But if you're jumping around, you're not going to be as tight as when you're more geographically constrained by a vehicle. Right. Where it's like, Especially with for Medicare, you know, like that's right. why with final expense, it's like ubiquitous. It's the same, right? Exactly. That makes a ton of sense for Medicare Advantage. I've never known an independent, an independent agent. I mean, so that means they're not working for any call center in any capacity, right? Like a true independent agent that that worked like 40, 50 states for Medicare Advantage. It's just unrealistic to even be read to, to the nuances between the plans. Now, MedSup you can do that. Right. But if you want to do a good amount of Medicare advantage, it's like, how could you even begin? Because even I live near right outside of Fort Worth. So I kind of work the greater Dallas Fort Worth area, man, we've got like 20 carriers that offer dozens of different Medicare advantage plans. And there's so many nuances as to like which network of hospitals and doctors take which plans and yeah, go on down the list. And so I'm able to say when somebody calls me from around here within a couple hundred miles, I already know before they get halfway out of their mouth, like probably what plan is going to fit them. And so even my guys that want to do telesales specifically for Medicare Advantage, I encourage them with this product to do it over the phone in a region versus multiple states. We lose out on the ability to prospect to those massive numbers, but it's, it's kind of, you have to narrow down your geographical area to become an expert in this product. Whereas like, you know, whenever you become an expert in final expense, one of the beautiful things of it is that it, it translates across state lines. Like that expertise is just as valid in Idaho as it is in, in, you know, Oklahoma. So some of the differences there. hundred percent for sure. I love that. And it's so true. And the riches of the niches and you niche down even to, to stay in with the retiree market, right? You're not going after mortgage protection insurance. You're not working nights and late weekends, chasing Definitely. down mortgage leads and banging doors. You're dealing with the, the retiree population, the senior market, just like my agency is as well. And we don't have to work late nights unless we Mm -hmm. choose to. We don't have to work weekends unless we choose to. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the niches for me. Oh, man, I loved it. Like, I can grab my telephone, work anywhere in the nation, and I can make income. I don't have to, like, the niche of physically being that brick and mortar, being that local guy where, you know, when you train, and it sounds horrible to say, but when you train kind of 
your clients, you are training your clients on how they deal with you. If a client starts out on the phone with you, they'll stay on the phone with you and how you serve them. If you start off with that face-to-face, -face, like what you guys are doing, it's tough to say, okay, I'm not going to go see you to service you anymore. We're going to do this all by phone from this point forward. They're going to go, but Kenny, you Why come to my house once out? a year, man, I miss you. I, I got yeah. cookies for you. Get over here. Right. Yeah. So it's like, it, it, you're kind of like starting the dance and how you start that dance is kind of how you need to finish it in some ways. Yeah. Um, I don't know. That's just my two cents on there. I don't know if you found that to be the case either. Uh, definitely. There's a percentage of clients that try to almost demand that yearly sit down. No doubt about it. No, yeah. Most of them, dude, once they've got to know you in person and you've developed that relationship, they are okay with that transition to the phone. Cause it's like, they don't have that question in the back of their head. Who am I talking to or any, anything like that? And, but there's a probably 10 to 15% of my clients that I would lose if I didn't go back and visit with them in person, because they love that so much. But the, all, all, the other side of that is those do tend to be very loyal clients, because since they're so adamant about that one-to-one -one touch, that 10 to 15%, they don't really answer any phone calls. You know, they hate doing anything over the phone. And so this is where what this whole point of this conversation is like the niches, right? Like, I'm picking up on some, no, this isn't all of my clients, but some percentage of them will essentially only do business face-to-face. -face. So if they're the easiest ones to keep on the books long-term because not many people are willing to come visit with them face-to-face, -face, especially depends if they're out in the country or whatever, you know? So, you know, Absolutely. the pros and cons of all, of every, of every business. I, I've never been a big fan of trying to paint the perfect picture for something, you know, cause I've done too much in the senior market world to know, like, it's not, the grass isn't always greener on the other side. It's that's that's true. What I was saying, like, what, what drives you? Like, do you, if you get excited about the fact that you can talk, like that your prospect pool is limitless, like telesales is going to call to you. If you like get excited for whatever reason of going to people's houses and like seeing that in those funny goofy situations you're gonna be able to duplicate your success longer because you're enjoying you get excited about what you're doing but the second aspect is good training man i've dabbled in things that i probably would have been really successful and when i say dabbled i mean not i'm not a dabbler okay i gave it a good effort but it, right. it didn't become my my calling but I don't even think it was necessarily that I wouldn't have enjoyed it. I just didn't have an expert that really knew how to, how to show me how to do it. So it's like, though you need both of those pieces to have success. You got to get excited and see the big picture about what you're doing. And then you've got to have a coach, a mentor that like you do, man, you're like the, one of the most hands-on trainers I've ever met. I love that. There's so many people that don't get that and that's why they fail out, you know? Um, but those two things kind of go hand in hand for your success. Absolutely. Mentorship matters, right? Like if you're contemplating the face-to-face -face arena, go for a ride along with somebody that's legit in the space. Go for a ride along with Kenny and be like, okay, what do the houses smell like? Am I cool with that? They're great people, okay? I'm telling you, they're amazing folks. They're, they're good. But then there's some people that are grouchy and, and some people that will slam the door on you and some people that will tell you to go somewhere that isn't heaven, okay? It happens, but guess what? In the telespace, you're going to get it too, okay? You're going to have the like go beep 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 okay can't even say it on youtube you're gonna get told all kinds of cranky little things and you're gonna get adversity so don't think that like this industry is rainbows okay and unicorns because 90 plus percent of agents fail a lot of them fail for lack of mentorship lack of a good mindset lack of good leads lack of good mm -hmm. training they don't have somebody that'll really like be their partner in the business it, it's more like okay you're gonna get squeezed okay and it just here's a contract uh you're independent good go be independent see ya a lot of places treat agents like that which i think you know contributes to agent failure but you know kenny and i we talked a lot offline and you know a lot of agents sometimes they think it's like the next shiny little object will somehow make them better right we've talked about that where sometimes it's like oh well if i just go here 
then it'll somehow be better. And I'm not saying that there's not a reason because there's agencies that don't train. They don't do what you do, Kenny, and they don't do what I do. And they don't actually put time in and serve great agents. But there's there's a fraction of the agent force that wants to find success without ever knowing what sweat smells like okay mm -hmm. this industry you're gonna have to sweat if you want to have a chance and yes i said chance of success in this industry it's phenomenal like you do what kenny and i do and what agents that partner with us do it's powerful but it takes sweat it doesn't come cheap easy or free you got to put your back into it you got to believe in yourself i mean have you seen that to be true too where you get agents you know you can kind of call them human ping pong balls sometimes where they just bounce around like a bad pachinko machine and really don't like get after it, if that makes sense, even 100%. though you've put a lot of time in. Oh man, I, I've seen that so many times in this industry where it's always the next thing. And the, the thing is none of these shiny objects are, are going to produce the fruit that you imagine they will without like a consistent pursuit and effort into them over time, you know, sure. I know you've met agents that come in and, and do six figures plus in their first year. That happens. Those, Absolutely. those people are out there. They're, they're the, the, the one percenters, but a lot of guys got to come in and they put their, they got to, they don't make a hundred thousand dollars in six months. And they think, Oh, this, this isn't it for me. I need something better. Well, got, no matter what, you're selling annuities, you're selling Medicare, you're selling final expense, 100000 500000 a million dollars, it's going to take some effort. It's there. The opportunity's there. I mean, we're living proof of it ourselves, but it just isn't, it isn't easy. And you got to find a mentor and stick with something. That's what I, one reason agents fail, not even just in general, on leads. It's because they've never worked leads before. They try one lead source, whatever it is, okay? Mm -hmm. And then it, they have a bad week and they just give up on it. They're like, these sucked, this, that, and the other. I'm like- It's the lead's fault. Yeah, right? it's the lead's fault. Don't get me wrong. There's bad leads out there. Oh, for but sure. But you're not going to know how to work that lead and how to, how to make the most of it and really know if it sucks or if it was just you, you weren't good yet. Yeah, but but then you stick Absolutely. with it for six months and you go, I'm glad I stuck with it because now I know how to get through to these leads. Now I know what to expect from these leads and I'm, I, I love it. It's helping me grow my business. Or you can at least say, I gave it a genuine effort. I, you know, it wasn't for me. I moved on to a different type of lead or a different product. Just like you said, man, if you don't smell any sweat, you're never going to get to where you're trying to go, no matter what niche you pursue, you're just going to bounce around. Oh, for sure. And you've got to really love what you said where you got, you got a mentor, but you've got to stay with it. Like you've got to stay in that niche, which for those of you watching, sometimes your niche may be a little bit boring. Okay. You want to build something you're proud of, get into a niche. Like what I do, get into a niche. Like what Kenny does, Medicare, 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 Medicare. If you want to make it, then you get really good. And you are now not the Swiss army knife of insurance. I see this with agents that are brand new. I got shined on to this early in my career, brother, when I first started. Okay. And I've made this public. I, I thought the more crap in my briefcase, the more I was going to capitalize. Farthest mm -hmm. thing from the truth. Oh, I got to sell you annuities and cancer policies and term and IUL and GUL and whole life and final expense and just all this stuff. And, and it's like you will lose your mind even if you know a little bit of each thing. It's like trying to build a house with a stinking Swiss army knife. It's useless, <laughs> even though it's a good tool. OK, you got to have yeah. a, a hammer and just start hammering nails. And when you first start out, go into a niche, get with. Medicare, get with just final expense. And then once you're so proficient, not perfect, but once you're so proficient that you can, okay, slam the nails without making your hand go ouch every day. Okay. Then go to the next product, everyone, then go to the next product. And that's you where for find, me personally, I became powerful. You may even find though, once you become proficient with that hammer and you're, and then you read now and you took, let's say you take Jason's advice. You're like, man, I am going to learn final expense by the phone, come hell or high water. You know, like this is what I'm going to do. You may find after a year and you're doing it and you're being consistent. You're like, I don't have the time nor the desire to add that product. I thought I needed because I'm, right. I'm crushing it right here. Like, I, you know, even me, I know how to sell final expense, I'm not saying I'm the best ever, but I've done it at a, at a high sure. level. I still, Absolutely. 
I only cross sell final expense if they really want it. You know what I mean? Like if they have a policy that I know is garbage, I'm going to help my customer out. I'll make some money on that. But I'm just like so zoned in on Medicare that I rarely, when I, I sell final expense at least a couple of times a month. But other than that, I will not sell, you know, a lot of Medicare agents try to sell um, ACA, Obamacare. Oh, and it, that's fine, but it's like, right. dude, just... I don't, there's not enough time in the day for me to take care of all the seniors right around me that I'm trying to hit, you know? So you may find that you don't even want to be a Swiss army knife. So niche down, get better. Like Jason said, then ask yourself the same question. And you may be surprised at what you tell yourself at that point. And it takes hard work. Everyone watching, it takes hard work to do what Kenny's doing in the Medicare space, going face-to-face, getting it done, and having great success. He sweats. He gets it done, and it's work, 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 work. So for those of you watching, thinking that success comes cheap, easy, and free, you're going to find yourself in a place that you go, ouch, 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 okay? This business is all about hard work. The harder you work, the luckier that you can get, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, but you got to niche, 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 niche down. Put your head down and quit, like, the biggest thing for me is the shiny object syndrome, right? A lot of agents are like, ooh, the shiny object. I need this new fancy CRM or I need these other leads over here or maybe this is the magic ticket. Maybe I need, you know, a fancier car to sell more policies. And it's it's a bunch of poison you're ingesting, team. Like, you know, what Kenny's doing with direct mail leads and a couple other lead sources that are tried and true, okay, the gold standard of leads, okay, and he's getting after it. With great success, it's a simple business, everyone watching, but it's not easy. But the mentorship will help you make it. When you've got the sweat going on, you're like, ooh, can I still stand? And you've got a mentor that's like, I got you, buddy. I'm going to spot you. I'm going to spot you. You can go heavier. I won't let you get hurt. Let's go. Okay, we got somebody spotting you, okay, in the industry that's done it for a long time successfully. And that's why I would say vet your trainer vet your trainer. It's a very dangerous place to be as an insurance agent if you have someone training you that has not done it. So if you're going to do telesales, say, how long have you done telesales personally? What's your best six months? Okay. How many sales have you personally ever sold by phone yourself in six months? Let's hear it. Okay. Mm -hmm. How many years have you done it? Just like with Kenny, he's very successful. He does it in a major good way. This isn't like a right way of telesales and a wrong way here. No, he does it a great way. He's getting that rich in that niche. And he's mentoring and helping face-to-face agents attain greatness. But you've got to want it. And if you want it, you've got to work for it. It's not, we don't just talk about it. We actually transact every day and actually do it. And that's what has helped me. It's not just yakking. It's just like, let's go, lean in. So, and I know for you, have you seen that too on the face-to-face side where just success is clothed in hard work? 100%, man. Yeah. I think uh, there's a kind of a funny little farce about this industry, like that you can, it's like, you're going to, the lazy Medicare agent people talk about, you know what Medicare agent is lazy? One of two agents, one, the guy that's about to fail out of the business or two, the guy that that has sweat so much for year after year after year that their renewals are so big that now they can be lazy. Okay, that's it. There's no Absolutely. no there, in every second in between there. It was hard work, you know. So uh, I see it all the time, and this business takes work. But you know, I always tell people this too. I know you, Jason. You have like a really high, strong work ethic. And I have a strong work ethic too, obviously, to some degree, but I don't think to the level you do. But what I do have is consistency. Like I'm persistent. I stick with it. And I do, when I find something that works, I just do it again and again and again. So you have to work hard, but you don't have to work a hundred hours a week, right? Like you, exactly. can, you don't have to, that will get you there faster usually. Right. But you what you you have to work hard and and consistent over a long period of time like don't expect success overnight and just when you got that mentor and you have that system you're going to duplicate maybe you aren't the guy that can put in 12 hours a day because you ha- you you value whatever else in your life you can do what we're doing without working 
you're going to have to sweat, but it doesn't have to be absurd. It just has to be consistent. Would you agree with that too, though? Absolutely. I love what you said about that, where so you've got to be persistent. Like if you want a chance of being profitable, okay, this industry is going to be a little pain. Okay, no pain, no gain. But I love the fact, Kenny, where you're like, you have to be persistent. You want to get what you want, don't give up. Okay, if you're one that gives up every time things get tough, Okay, this industry is not for you. Just don't even start it. Okay, if you're an agent that's like, man, I just give up. I, if you got a whole lot of quit up in you, you're never going to make success. If you got a whole lot of quit in you, run. Don't go into this industry. This industry is about persistence, staying at it, staying in the niche. Like you're not going to, okay, dig a good foundation if you don't stay with your back into it. You got to believe what you, you're doing is right for the client. But to get what you want, you cannot give up. And too many agents I've seen, they give up right before they hit the gold. They're digging, and then they stop. And the next agent gets down into the dirt, gets their hands dirty, and starts digging, digging, digging. And is going to find success because you never dug deep enough on that lead. You didn't resolve that lead. There was a lead request. They only knocked that door twice. And like, ah, garbage lead, throw it away. And you and I would just door knock that thing until – Okay, they either get a great product for us or we find out they passed on. We're going to pursue their hearts and try to help them. Most agents give up. I've, I've seen this and you don't give up like and you're not lazy by any stretch. It's like we don't work. You know, we don't have to work longer than we choose to. And when we work, we go all in like all in or not at all. Like this half speed stuff is crazy to me. So here's a, a, a little tip for some people that are, um, that have stuck, if you've stuck with us this, this far into the, to the show or, or the video, when you are new, you have to milk your leads. I just put a video out on my channel recently called how to milk those leads, you know? And so for me, that's a combination of calling. Cause I like to call and book my appointments before mm -hmm. I door knock leads. And Absolutely. So, but what I'm getting at is just like Jason just said, you got to resolve the lead. You have to be persistent on, on a lead. Um, you paid money for that lead. You need, you're trying your very best to help somebody and to generate an income off your investment in that lead. Um, but here's something that's pretty cool. Whenever you have been in the insurance business long enough and you've put in enough persistency, you can actually not, but choose not to milk your leads as much. Why? Because now you have a higher income, you've got money, you've got renewals, maybe you've trained some agents below you years down, you know, when as you grow in the business. And so then at that point, you, you either work your leads super smart and super hard, or if you've got the money, you take the low hanging fruit and you buy more leads. You can only do that once you've got the money and the know-how, right? I'm honestly, if I'm training an agent, I'm working my leads. Like we're going to work these 20 leads. I'm going to show you how to get 10 policies out of these 20 leads. Mm. But if I'm working just completely by myself, I can afford it. I will maybe take the, I'll maybe milk them to like six. And then I'll say, I'm going to buy another 20 leads, but I'm still working, right? I just have the funds now to double or triple down on more leads so that you don't have to milk them as hard. But if you're new to this business and you're trying to pursue your dream and have the, the money to be able to do things like that, you have to milk the lead and resolve each lead. But I don't know oh, why man. I shared that. I think it's just funny that you- It's gold. Because cause as you have more money and more success, you can say, mm, you know, I did my one door knock through these leads. I got my, you know, my four Betty and Toms that were like at the door waiting on me, ready to go. Instead of grinding the rest of these leads, I, I can buy another 20 leads right now and just go, you know what I'm saying? So oh, absolutely. Cause when an agent's new, like yeah, you've got to put the time in and the sweat you just do. And then you become more successful and you're like, you know, now we're like, you know what? I don't care what leads cost. It doesn't matter. Give me a good lead that's exclusive that no one else's hands have touched. And let's go take care of business because mm -hmm. you're so scalpel sharp serving these great men and women. Mm -hmm. And when agents are new, sometimes it's better to start with a, maybe a good aged lead. We've got great, okay, lead vendors for telesales. But even in telesales, there's that where they don't resolve that lead. They may, an agent may only call it once or twice and then give up on the lead. Yeah. And that just became an age lead for somebody else that they'll go work, right? Because they want success. And some veteran agents can be lazy. Let's just call a spade a spade, right, Kenny? Yeah. Uh, but, but you kind of earn that. Your tools are sharp. Yes. Your, your savings is stout. Your, maybe your renewals are great. 
And, but you only get there by repetition and the persistence that we've been, that we've been talking about. And this is another thing, you know, I know we're probably coming up towards the end of, uh, of this, but that's another thing that just is a testament to niches. If you're trying to do everything, you never have all of your little Swiss tool tools are all kind of like rusty and, and dull. But if you just have one or two products that you truly like hone in on that skill and hone in on that product, you know, it upside down, inside out, and you, you, you serve that same prospect every week. So you know how to overcome that objection that doesn't phase you anymore. You know how to get to, to move past that. That's a result of specializing and it's a result of diving deep into a niche. And I could, I wish I would have heard these words seven years ago when I got into the business, because it would have say I would have be a lot more fina- financially successful now had I been doing this, uh, this nit- the idea of specializing early on. So oh, absolutely, brother, I lost so much money by not like I the buying into the lie that I need to do be all things to all people. And I got to have all products and know all of it like right now. Like I was shined onto that, right? I think maybe you were victim to that too in your first starter company, right? Mm -hmm. And then later on, it's like, oh, I'm just going to do one thing. And that's when the income started massively accelerating. And same for you, right? With you guys, you guys are cranking it with the Medicare millennials, hitting that niche, right? Where it's like, let's do the Medicare. Let's do one thing really, really, really good. And then just keep doing more of that. Like keep Mm -hmm. helping folks, keep helping more people. And that's the same way in the telespace. It just looks different. There's no right way or wrong way here. Okay. There's not. It's like if you're helping others get what they want, you're doing the good work. Okay. You get in the face to face that Kenny and them are doing is power. It's just a different way to play. We're all just having fun, taking care of good people with great products, but it does, it's a different just type of work. That's all it is. And the in the wealth that is accumulated, should I say can be, because not everybody makes it in this industry. Let's be clear about that. But the wealth that can be accumulated, uh, would you say that it's the same in your industry as it is in mine, where it's kind of, I call it like, it's like a snowflake. At, at first, it's lots of hard work and it's it seems insignificant. You get a couple MAPDs, get a couple MAPDs. Okay, it's not a lot of money, but it adds up slowly. Mm-hmm. And you get a bunch of final expense policies, get a bunch of final expense policies. Seems like not a lot, but it adds up slowly because we make it up in volume. Mm-hmm. And then you stay in this industry your first year. And then it's like, ooh, I got paid in my slippers, right? Mm-hmm. And it's like, ooh, yeah. I got paid with my kids in the background. This is awesome. And then you do this five years, 10 years, okay? You expand 15 plus years, you know, as long as I've been in the business. And it's like, man, the renewals are amazing. You know, I'm still getting paid from my first starter company years and years and years ago. They're still paying me on these itty bitty little policies, you know, final expense policies that I wrote long, long, long time ago. So it's it, it the the long play, everyone, by being a hard worker and grinding and sweating and helping and serving these great people, it's worth it. I promise you it'll be worth it in your career if you would just stick and stay. Yeah. And you see that too, where the new agents kind of lose sight sometimes of what they're truly building. And they don't like, yeah. they see a couple sales because you're in the same position, right, brother, where they get a couple sales and it's maybe it's a couple hundred bucks. If it's like not a T65, maybe you can go into some of that, you know, how you guys work as well. Yeah. Well, first of all, just reminded me when I first got into final expense, my favorite company back then was Transamerica. I loved selling their final expense product. It was really flexible. They had that standard and preferred, and both of those were level. They had a really, I wouldn't say easy, but like a simple underwriting questions on and, the, and these were all paper apps at that time not that there, there were electronic apps it was only seven or eight years ago but but final expense companies kind of they took them a lot longer to join the, the, uh, well, yeah, the train do. with technology so i used to love selling transamerica it was my go-to you know that was my first one and then i think back then foresters was my second choice my how things have changed but um i still get a check every month from transamerica on renewals you know and it's it's like Close, like still close to a thousand dollars. Are you kidding me? Like, right. you know, that's pretty cool. And that in final expense, their renewals aren't near as big in the long term as Medicare, but I still built that up on one company by just hard work. I, yeah, it just reminded me that I'm still getting paid on that, on that from final expense a company that I haven't sold in years now. Um, but yes, dude, it's, I have personally been there where you're like, dude, is what I'm doing worth it? Like, 
I'm not going to make a million dollars this year. You know, I thought I was already going to be rich. Like, but, but then those little, like you said, I like what you said about snowflake, a snowflake, the first one, it just melts on the concrete, right? It don't even seem to stick around at all, but it gets the, that spot gets a little colder and colder. And then the next few snowflakes stick. And then next thing you know, you got a mound of snow and you're just successful uh, and, and you're reaping the fruits of what you did. That's the insurance business for you. So um, I, I've got an appointment coming up, Jason. So I did want to ask you real quick, because I'm going to cross post this on your kind of uh, interview or recording us today, but I would post this on my channel. Absolutely, Where brother. can my guys like the best way to find you? Is it on YouTube? Is Do you like so, when they go to your website? What? Oh, absolutely. They can go to just search Jason Final Expense. You'll see this ugly face on there. Okay. Or you can go to jasonfinalexpense.com. Um, you can click the little link on there. I've got a YouTube link on my website as well. So that's the easiest way to find me. And then for those of you watching with Kenny, um, make sure you let me know for the crew out there where they can reach you. Okay. Medicare millennials and let them know your channel. If you yep, as well. So it's just Medicare millennials on YouTube and Medicare millennials on Instagram. We do uh, put out a lot of little kind of motivational content on Instagram. YouTube's obviously a little more in depth. We do some, some cool training stuff on YouTube and then our website's just Medicare millennials.com. So um, that man, thank you so much for having me on. You're welcome. And thanks the odd, you know, for you, the audience watching anything we can do to serve you, let us know, you know, mm -hmm. appreciate you greatly. And let me tell you, these little snowflakes, they really, really add up. The riches are really truthfully in the niches. Okay. Don't get shined on by being, you've got to have every little tool um, to really take it to the next level. It's a lie. Okay. Niche down, you'll find the riches, but make sure you got a good mentor in your life, like Kenny or myself or somebody else. There's a lot of good mentors out there too. Okay. We're not the only game in town, but make sure you've got a good fit. And hopefully you'll find success. I appreciate y'all watching. Kenny, lead us out, brother. All right. We'll <laughs> see you guys.